Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. Today, my guest is Caroline Simmons. It's Caroline, right? Not Carolyn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Caroline is a mother of two, and she is a and she's a mother of two itty bitty kids. And she's a blogger, and she's owner of a blog called Swaddles and Bottles, and it's a resource for new moms. Now, what's super interesting is that she started this in 2016, and she has since grown it to over 6.6 million page views. So we are going to get into how she has done that. Welcome to the show, Caroline. Hi, thank you for having me. So I have to say that we met because you sent me the loveliest email out of nowhere just saying how much you enjoyed the podcast. Yes, um, I, I really, I am someone who enjoys, I, I always want to be learning about whatever there is out there that I can get my hands on um, involving blogging and growing and just finding new strategies and tips. And I have, anytime I see your email pop up in my inbox, I either read it right then or there, or I, I flag it because I know it's always got such great content. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy it. And you know, I, like we were saying that the internet can be um, kind of a lonely place. And so I always like to just send a, a positive message whenever I can and just send you a little word of encouragement that I'm reading it and I'm loving it and it is absolutely helping me. Oh, thank you. And you're also, you use Milo Tree because if, yes. you, if you sign up for Milo Tree, you get my emails. And yes. so, um, so honestly, like when I get an email like that, it's it makes my day. Well, good. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> so then, when you when I learned a little bit about your business, I was like, "Please come on the show. I wanted I want to interview you." Yeah, so, and I'm happy to share whatever I can, kind of pay it forward. Everything you've given me, I'd love to share some of my tidbits and hope that it can help someone else as well. I, okay, so let's start at the beginning. Okay, okay, so you started this blog not long ago, right? So tell uh, me a little bit about it. you and and what how you did this. Okay, yeah. So I launched it in October of 2016. Wow, so just I, two years ago. Just about two years ago now. Um, my first daughter was just three months old at the time. And when I was pregnant with her, you know, I spent so much time online trying to get my hands on, you know, any and all information I could about you know, what was to come in my near future in terms of, you know, my pregnancy and labor and delivery and bringing home a newborn and, you know, breastfeeding that newborn. And so I spent so much time online just trying to collect every bit of information I could. And then as I kind of started going through, you know, those first couple months of motherhood and testing things out and trying to figure out, you know, what was working, what wasn't, what were the mom hacks that were just saving me, you know, time and sanity and whatnot? I thought I would love to share this. And so I decided I wanted to start a blog. I had never, you know, done anything website related. Um, what, was, what was your previous life? My previous life, I kind of dabbled around in a few different things. Um, I spent a few years working for an energy company doing, I did some recruiting for them. I did some customer service for them. Prior to um, leaving my job, right before I had my first daughter, Emmy, I was working in higher education, um, working with college students, which was really, really fun. Okay. Um, so to be honest, I can say that I hadn't probably found what I wanted to do mm. long term. Um, and then when this idea, I mean, like once once it struck me, like creating a blog, creating something from scratch that I've done all on my own and growing it to the point of reaching, I mean, you know, never would have guessed it would have been millions of mothers and helping them. Mm. Once that idea was like in my brain and in my heart, there was no stopping it. Like it gave me, it still to this day gives me goosebumps just thinking about having the opportunity to do that. And so that's kind of what set me on my path. Okay. And, so, you, um, so you get this idea, you have this tiny little baby mm -hmm. and you think, I want to help other mothers. Right. So what do you do? I bought a domain and I'm pretty sure my husband thought I had lost my marbles because he's like, do you know anything about blogging? And I didn't. Um, and really, I just like when I was a new mom, I was a new blogger. I researched, researched, researched. I took every free course I could find. I read every ebook I could find. I invested a little money in, you know, some paid ebook, ebooks, some, you know, paid courses, and I just 
just dug into anything I could get my hands on to figure it out. And wow. I wow. started creating content. Um, I think one of the things that was the most helpful was that I was creating content for an audience that I was in their same position. Yep. yep. You know, I was going through these same struggles and I was finding solutions and I was, you know, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And, um, I think that really helped. It was just, I had to tap into what's going on in my life. What struggles am, am I going through and how can I help others? I think that. that is like a, you know, it's so funny because people will go, I want to start a business. What should it be? And I always say, examine your own life because Absolutely. you, you, if, if you're having a problem, chances are millions of other people are mm-hmm. having that exact problem. And that's mm-hmm. it. Again, like we didn't set out to create Milo Tree. We built it for ourselves. It worked really well. We're like, hey, we could help other bloggers. And so we didn't set out to go, we're going to make this app. And, you know, it's just, we, we scratched our own itch and we were able to find a solution and just like you did. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that is, I think what, what brings in the people is when you're solving a problem for them and you're not setting out trying to do something for yourself. Right. Um, you're, you're saying, man, this is something that a lot of people are struggling with. How can I help? And when you have a mindset of, of helping, I think, I think people can sense that. Yes. And, um, I think that they, they attract to it. I agree. It's like they can smell it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you start writing posts. Yeah, I started creating content and um, you know building the website, which that that was a struggle in itself. Um, you know, learning this new platform of WordPress and that that took some time. That was probably the biggest learning curve. Did you hire? Learning. Did you hire somebody? No, no. It was really just tutorials. Wow. Um, watching a lot of YouTube tutorials, um, just reaching out to other bloggers and, and just kind of trying to figure it out little by little. And still to this day, I mean, just about, I would say it was maybe three months ago, I, you know, installed a new theme in my blog and made a major change. So, um, I tried not to be too hard on myself with it being perfect in the beginning, because that is kind of, you know, building a website is ever evolving. Right, um, but right. that was probably the hardest, um, kind of hurdle in the beginning was the technical stuff. Mm. Um, You know, something as simple as changing the color on my menu bar would take me, you know, 45 minutes to Google it and figure it out and then try it and it didn't work. So you had to try it again. So um, that, that was definitely tough, but you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, you know, what I do know and what I can accomplish. And it was, it was fun to learn all of those new things. So, okay. So there's a lot of content on your site. Yes. Did you write it all? No, no. So I did in the beginning. uh, And then I believe it was June of this year. I really kind of felt like while my experiences were great, why not start providing some other views, um, some other experiences? Because, you know, every path through motherhood is unique. And why not, you know, give some other people an opportunity to share what they have. So I opened up an application and, um, you know, put it out there on social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, and started reading, um, you know, content that all of these other mothers had submitted. And I was blown away by the results. I never would have thought that I would have received as many applications as I did. And um, from that, I now have three writers who write for me consistently. They are wonderful. I feel incredibly blessed to have them because they too, I think really share my just passion for helping moms and providing whatever information they can. So they help me create a lot of the content. Um, I have done a lot of guest posts in the past where I've allowed, you know, newer bloggers to share things, but I would say probably 70 to 80% of the content I wrote myself. Um, but I'm really loving having other views and other just stories and do point you, of views from mothers. Do you pay them? I do. Yes. My content writers who are with me, my three, I do pay them. Um, I have not paid for like blog posts in the past, okay. um, but I do pay my writers. Absolutely. I mean, with if you read some of the content they provide me with, it's it's amazing. It's stellar. And, um, you know, I like supporting them and the fact that they're also trying to, you know, make something of themselves for as freelance writers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love being able to support them on their journey as well. And how much content now, how often are you posting? 
you know, that's, that's one of the interesting things about blogging. I, over the past, I would say since June, since I um, have brought on these writers, I've been a lot more consistent. You know, when I brought home my second daughter, she was born in October. She was a little bit early. Um, so she really needed, you know, extra love, extra attention. And so I, I didn't post there for maybe two months. Wow. Um, when I first found out I was pregnant with her, oh my goodness, I had like the worst morning sickness. And so I didn't post then for, you know, two, three weeks. So I, I wouldn't advise that to other bloggers, but I would say it is one of the nice things about blogging is when you do have to take time for your family and for yourself, you can. Um, but I have seen a lot of growth since I've been really consistent. And I'd say, um, you know, for the month of September, I think I'm already up to, we posted 16 times. Okay. So, wow. And that's a combination of my own and um, my writers as well. So as long as there's stuff to be shared, you know, we're going to be sharing it. We're not going to hold ourselves back. Um, as long as they, you know, will keep writing and I keep having inspiration on things to write, we're going to keep putting it out there. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Now here is the, the million dollar question, actually the $6.6 6 million question, which is <laughs> how have you grown your page views so big? Well, I think, and this is just kind of my philosophy for, or for any blog is you have to know your audience and where they are spending their time. Where are they hanging out? And wherever that is, you have got to work the heck out of it. Mm. And for me, um, being that I am targeting women, new mothers, for me, that was Pinterest. Mm. And Pinterest has been the number one source of traffic for my blog, um, really since day one. And so I have, um, I have just, researched and read and implemented and, and tested and dug into my analytics with Pinterest more than any other platform because it's what's working for me. Mm. And um, I think that that's something, it took me time to figure out, to work on what's working. You know, I think as a blogger, we can get so tied up with, well, there's Facebook and there's Instagram and there's Twitter and there's LinkedIn and, you know, there's all these different things and you're trying to make each of them work because you maybe hear that they're other, they're working for other bloggers or you think it could work. We're really, I mean, if Pinterest is working, work Pinterest and focus on that. And once you've got some consistent traffic from it, that's it's okay to start working on other things and looking into other things. But I think that by really focusing on that one platform and doing whatever I could to learn and master and just make it work for me, that's what really drove the traffic. Um, Oh, you are so, by the way, you are so preaching to the choir. I, I agree with you 100%. I always say this, which is go toward what's working. And then people will say, yeah, but what, what happens when Pinterest changes their algorithm? And I go, oh, don't worry, they will. And then you go toward whatever else is working. Mm -hmm. But if something is working, dig deep. It doesn't mean that you, you ignore Instagram, but focus on what's making you money. Right. And especially if it's, you're just starting out and you're like, wow, this is working. Okay. That means you've just skimmed the surface. If you've just pinned a few times and it starts doing, you know, good things for your page views, imagine what would happen if you really just took the time to educate yourself and read as much as you could. Even if you take three days to do nothing, but just educate yourself, it will pay you back and you will start knowing how to implement these things differently and just, and, and really launch it. So let's talk about this. Okay. So did you take Pinterest courses? I did not take a specific Pinterest course. I'll be honest, I was an avid pinner before. Um, you know, I loved recipes and, you know, when I was young and single, I had my dream wedding board and all of that good I love stuff. it, yeah. And my fashion board. So I was a pinner beforehand. And I think I, so I understood how it worked in that sense. When it came to making it work for myself as a blogger, I think it was really just about digging into analytics. And, um, you know, there's so many free um, resources out there, you know, just a quick Pinterest search on Pinterest tips and what you can do to make it work for you. There's so much content out there, which I love that about the blogging world. I love that people are willing to share yes. um, what's working for them. 
And so I don't believe I, I there's no, I might have taken some free, um, you know, master courses as they call them, where it's like a one thing where you sit in on and they share just kind of a few golden nuggets from Pinterest. But I didn't take one course that kind of changed everything for me. It was more of just grabbing whatever I could, wherever I could. And just implementing little things here and there. And then, like I said, it's all about digging into your analytics. You know, if you don't know what's working, you're not going to know what to stop doing and what to change. Okay, so or, wait, so, so let's unpack that a little bit. Okay. What does that mean, digging into your analytics? So it means taking the time to, so, you know, you've got your analytics on, I mean, everything. If we're talking specific about Pinterest. Yeah, let's do Pinterest. It'll let, you know, Pinterest analytics lets you know what boards you're pinning to that are getting the most results. Okay. You can also look into things like what type of, you know, pins are performing better. You can see, um, you know, what times of day that you're pinning that really are, are you working for you? I am an avid user of Tailwind. Got it. Yeah, and we, um, we do too. Oh my we gosh. Use it too. And that it's not just the Pinterest analytics alone. My tailwind analytics are huge for me. You know, it lets me know uh, so much. And, and especially, like I said, I, I'm a big user of the group boards. Um, using group boards on Pinterest is a great way to expand your reach. And it's, it's great how they can let you know, you know, you've pinned to this board 67 times in the past month and it's only been, been repinned once. Well, that tells you that your ideal audience is not hanging out in that group board. That's mm. you're not getting your pin in front of the right people. So it may be time to, you know, take a break from that group board, possibly leave that group board and really start to focus more on where are, you know, my, my ideal pinners, um, how can I get in touch with them and how can I make sure that, you know, they're seeing my content and clicking on it. So, so in Tailwind, are mm -hmm. you, you're looking at which are your most successful boards? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at what are my most successful boards. I really also love to look at what people are pinning directly from my domain yes. because it goes to show them, is there like an image within a blog post that really is like standing out to them and they're really captivated by, wow, this is, this is such an interesting graphic. And so if I see that that's being pinned a lot, I like to go in and maybe create a new pin um, that's maybe a little modified version of that, that graphic. Um, it just, it tells you so much. Um, so yeah, the, but the board, the board analyzer, as they call it, um, that really helps me see um, where is my effort both most being returned, you know, where is, I'm using that time slot to pin to this board. Is it worth it? And mm. uh, then from there, on the opposite end of, you know, leaving boards, it also helps me see what are my rock star boards? Where are my people, you know, for sure hanging out? And um, I like to make sure that, you know, as soon as I have a new blog post, that it's going to my rock star boards because I know that that's going to be the fastest and the best way to reach my audience. And how many boards do you have? Oh my goodness. I think I'm probably in about the 145 range right now. Okay. Okay. So, and that's, what's really great about group boards is because I personally have, um, maybe 15,000 followers on Pinterest right now, but my reach is 4.5 million wow. Meaning by wow. contributing or, you know, being part of those group boards, it's expanding my reach well beyond my individual followers. And wow. that, I mean, that's, that's huge right there. That is what I say is, is the secret to Pinterest. Is it, the group boards. The group boards, absolutely. Because again, I feel like I've heard over time that group boards are not as useful, that they need to be very uh, kind of curated, you know, not, a, are you pinning in group boards that have thousands or hundreds of contributors? <sighs> You're touching on something that I've heard a lot of debate on too. So I agree with you um, that if you are in boards that are um, pin, pin whatever you want, no rules, pin whatever, and there's, you know, 4.5 thousand people in it. Yes, that can be a negative, but I, I am personally part of a board that I think's got probably seven or 800 contributors and it's one of my top ones. Wow. So that's why when I'm yep. looking at group boards to join, I'm not 
usually making that decision myself. I'm going to ask to join. I'm going to give it 30 days and I'm going to let my tailwind analytics tell me from there. So I love I that. test it out, see if it's working. And if it doesn't, okay, I'll go ahead and leave. Um, but I also think that it, you really do need to have a balance. I would say, you know, 70, 30, 70% of your group boards, you really need to be focusing for that's, very specific target audience. You know, I'm a parenting and pregnancy blogger. I'm going to be joining things that are boards that focus around pregnancy, babies, labor and delivery, breastfeeding. Like that's what I want to be looking for. Yep. I want to kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with testing them out, but I'm also very quick to leave them if I feel like they're not working, but I'm not going to rule them out from the beginning. Let's give it a try. Now, how are you finding these group boards? Pin Groupie is an awesome, um, resource. Pin okay. Groupie, um, has really evolved to, let me say, from when I first started blogging. Um, they've really updated it and it's a lot more user friendly now. You're able to go in and um, filter out the category of group boards that you're looking for. Um, so that's awesome. Another great thing is just, you know, go to your fellow bloggers, see what kind of boards um, they're on. Um, look at, you know, some of the bigger bloggers in your in your area and see where they're pinning to and aim to to get added to those group boards as well. And so will you reach out? Will you email them? Will you message them on Pinterest? Yeah, I um, I usually just follow the, you know, the instructions in the group board and it'll say, you know, follow me and, you know, send me an email or follow me and message me on my Facebook page and things like that. Um, I think one of the most valuable things that's helped me is I two things. I, I always follow up. I keep a running list of who I have messaged in regards to these group boards. And then if I'm added, you know, I make a note, send them a thank you email. But, you know, a week to 10 days later, if I haven't heard back, I send a second email and I continue to follow up with them. Uh, oh, I love this. Okay, keep going. And then more than that, a lot of times, and this is like a really big secret, but like a lot of times you'll notice that the bigger bloggers don't have, you know, the bloggers that have you know, two, 300,000 followers don't have instructions on how you can grow the board. And so it takes some digging. I go to their website, I find, you know, their email address and I send them a very personalized email um, to see if I can get added. And so a lot of times I think that, you know, bloggers will look at these larger accounts and well, there's no instructions on how to get added. So they must not be accepting contributors. And I don't take that as, you know, a stop. I, I keep going. I keep digging past that and I find a way to make a connection with them. And I've got a group board that I'm part of and you know, she didn't have any instructions, but she has half a million followers and they're my target audience. And I reached out to her and I kind of established a relationship with her and asked if I could be a contributor. And that was a big launch forward for my traffic. That yeah. is terrific. Oh my God, I'm gonna go back and, and kind of rethink our whole group board strategy. Yeah, it's powerful. It really, really is. And not only that, it's a great way to build a community with yes. um, people in your network. I, in, in my ebook, I have an ebook pinning for page views where I talk about, you know, the strategies that work great for Pinterest. Um, one of my suggestions is to have your own group boards so that you yes. can, you know, pay back the favor. Yes. You know, give other people an opportunity to um, market their blog posts and their blogs to your audience. And I think it's a great way to say like, hey, I've got this many followers and this group board, your content's great, I'd love to add you. And you kind of do like a little group board swap and build a relationship there. So for for all the group boards who have given you the opportunity to share your content, you know, pay that back and, and invite some of your fellow bloggers to join yours as well. So how many would you say, how many group boards are you in? How many group boards do you have? And how many regular boards? I mean, I, you don't have to be like, I, I know you don't know these numbers off the top say, of your head, but in general. Yeah, I want to say I am probably part of at least like 100, 120 group boards. What? 40 are my own. I'm so worried that those numbers are going to be completely off, but like that's just what <laughs> no. I guess telling me. Because I'm thinking like when I'm in Tailwind and I'm adding all those boards, I'm thinking of like how many it is. Right. And yeah. And so so I, I want to say that's probably about right. I'm like maybe 120 or so. Wow. Okay. How do you keep track then 
of all of these group boards? How, like, do you have, say, your top five group boards? So if you're pinning and you're going to, you know, pin into, do you pin into a hundred boards? So this is going to be really hard to explain like this, but so um, Tailwind has this amazing feature called board lists. And um, what I do is I create groups of 10. Um, So I have mom boards A, mom boards B, mom boards C, and that's how I go through. Um, I, of course, have, you know, a Google Docs with all of my full list of all of them and which one is on which board list. So that way I ensure that I'm not missing one. Um, And then when I go to pin a new pin, I go through my list and I pin to board, you know, group board A, group board B, group board C. That also, having it set up in that way where I have those different um, board lists helps me, um, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of mix up where I'm pinning to, so that way I'm not pinning, you know, to all of the same boards on all of the same day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, Okay. so let, let me see if I can say that back to you. So you can group boards on Pinterest. On Tailwind. I mean, I'm sorry, on Tailwind, thank you. On Tailwind, so let's say, let's say you've got a hundred group boards, you can lump them, let's say 25 into a group, you know, and then another 25 into a group so that when you are choosing what boards to pin to, all you have to do is put that group name and all those 25 boards will be included. Yep. That's it. So okay. what's really nice is you can go, you know, on your first pin, you go A, B, C, D. Then on your second pin, you go B, C, A, D, your next pen. So that way you're really mixing it up. It helps you keep within, you know, group boards have rules. They don't want you pinning 25 times in one day. Really helps you mix it up so that you're pinning all across your different boards each day. And that's really awesome too, because I mean, you think about your reach, like I said, 4.5 million, when it's mixed up like that, you're really hitting all of those boards, all of those people throughout the week. Got it. Yes, this is terrific. Okay, so do you have somebody helping you? I don't have the, you mean with my Pinterest? Yes, so are you doing all of this? Um, I did have a VA for some time who was really, really helpful, um, and she ended up finding a great full-time job that was just like so meant for her. She's so great at it. Um, But she was helping me for a little while. Um, My husband helps me with some things like outside of Pinterest. He helps me with more of like the business aspects of it. Um, But no, Pinterest, I'm really kind of, doing it all on my own. And that's not a bad thing. I really enjoy it. I really love it. Um, it's, it's such a wonderful platform. And like you said, you know, they're always updating, they're always changing. And I think I've yet to see a change that I really dislike because I think that they're always just making it better for the users, which is great for us because that means people are enjoying it more. They're spending more time there. Um, so yeah, I really don't mind doing these things on my own um, because I just, I love Pinterest. (laughs) It's so terrific. Okay. How many hours a day are you spending on Pinterest? Um, Spending on Pinterest, honestly, not too many. Thanks to Tailwind. Um, I do do some manual pinning here and there. I really think that Pinterest rewards people who are in there being an active user and pinning. So I do, you know, get in there and pin on different, you know, recipes and just things that, are, you know, are, are, are of interest to me. So I do spend some time here and there, um, but I don't have much time to work each week because of, you know, the two little babies. So I have to be pretty wise with my time. Um, I'd say each week right now, I'm probably working, I would say 25 to 30 hours a week. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so I try to squeeze in as much as I can during nap time and after they go to bed. And uh, they go to a Mother's Day Out program two days a week for just five hours. So the night before they head off to their little school day, as we call it, I like to sit down and plan well more than five hours of work. So that way I can really just set the momentum for myself and just get as much done as I can in that amount of time. That's okay. Who is creating graphics for you? I create my graphics. Cool. Okay. For ever so so using what platform or what Canva. service? Well, Canva. Canva okay. Yes. Um, I also really have just discovered um, 
Shutterstock, I believe is the name of it, and Adobe Photos. Um, a little bit pricier when it comes to purchasing photos, but the quality of them is so great. Um, and as much as I love Canva, Canva is very heavily used, and you really start to see um, a lot of the same photos being used over, it. over again. So for me, it's worth it to spend, you know, three dollars on a photo that I know is like a hundred percent unique and really just is so on point with the blog post topic. Um, so yeah, I but I love Canva. I am an avid user of it. One of my things for next week is to create a little tutorial for um, the bloggers in my Facebook group who I kind of help with whatever goals they have on Canva because it's just the possibilities are endless. Um, you know, you can really, I, I mean, every graphic on my blog, pretty much 99% of them I created in, in Canva. Wow, and do you have templates set up in Canva so that you can put the image in, change the text, and it looks like it's consistent with your site? Um, I don't, well, Canva provides a really great just Pinterest template, which is the yep. you know optimal size for a pin. Um, but besides that, I think it's really just creating my own brand in a way in terms of, you know, I have certain fonts that I always use. I really, I have just a look um, and that I, 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 I stick with. You know, I really like high quality images. I like for the image to be big and bold. Um, you know, I like for my, my text to be very easy to read as somebody's scrolling through Pinterest. I don't want it to be too small. Um, so in, in terms of templates, I'm really just using that, that Pinterest pin template on Canva and then adding all of my own kind of signature things. I wanted to take a short break to tell you about a new feature we've added at Milo Tree to help you grow your email list faster. Now, in your email pop-up, you can add, add an image. So let's say you've got an ebook or a course or a freebie, or you just want to make your pop-up pretty. Just add your image and you will increase the number of subscribers you get. So head on over to milotree.com, sign up for your account, get your first 30 days free, and now back to the show. Now, what about writing descriptions? How do you think about that on Pinterest? Writing, oh, you mean your pin description? Pin descriptions. I think you've got to use the same kind of SEO tactics that you use um, on your blog with Pinterest. You've got to really sit down and create a very keyword heavy description. Um, you've got to be thinking in the mind of your ideal reader. What are they going to be typing into a search bar? Mm -hmm. And whatever that is, you've got to find a way to work it into your description on Pinterest. Yes. Yes. Now, are you using hashtags? I haven't. I mean, I, I think maybe once or twice. I have not jumped into that. Um, and I, I, I know it's a newer feature, um, so I haven't started using them yet, but uh, I know others are, and I haven't heard too much feedback on it. Have you heard of people really seeing a huge we are starting to put a couple hashtags into our descriptions and I want to go back and add some hashtags, at least like one to every board description. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, again, that's a big undertaking because we got a lot of boards, but that's what I am thinking of doing. But we are starting to put a couple in our descriptions. Again, I don't know if it's helping. Right. I feel like it can't be hurting. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is put like our basic search words, you know, hashtag baby shower, hashtag right. girl baby shower, um, you know, hashtag pink baby shower, that kind of thing. And isn't that you just touched on like the toughest thing about blogging? Things are always changing. And then you've got to decide, do I spend an entire day going back and changing totally. all this? It's like a few, maybe what, six months ago, Pinterest decided that they were going to change the shape of their board covers. And we all had to spend an entire day going back and like yes. reusing yes. all these graphics. So it yes. as a blogger because you do you have to really weigh things out and say, is this a wise use of my time? Exactly. Or is it gonna even really make a difference? Ex and then you don't know. Exactly. Like that's the bit. You know, you have all these analytics and all this stuff, and then at the end of the day, too, there's a part of you that just doesn't know. 
Right. And I think that that's when you've got to take care of the things that you, like we've talked about with Pinterest, you've got to take care and nurture the things that are working for you and take on those, you know, outside things just one week at a time and don't try to do all of them at once. And you've really just got to space out and use your time wisely, which is a hard. Yes. And what I, what I want to say about you is you're not using hashtags and you're still getting tremendous traffic. So, So you know, you go well, entire day going back and doing hashtags because I don't think it's going to change too much. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you do a blog post or or, or let's (laughs) say even somebody, um, you have these writers, do you create the editorial calendar for them? Do they pitch you ideas? No, most of the time I'm sending them the ideas based on what I know their strengths are and what I feel um, like I've got one girl that's just awesome at like, you know, the how to's. She just wrote an awesome blog post for me about the maternity leave, like financial planner and how you can basically, you know, save up and just very, she's very good at like actionable steps, things to do. Mm -hmm. I've got another one who's just, she's wonderful at like tapping into the emotions of motherhood Mm -hmm. And mm-hmm. really just writing almost what I like to call like the supportive type blog posts. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also have someone, I, I have a labor and delivery nurse who writes for me. Mm. And so she gets all of the things that, you know, are extremely, um, they're medically, a lot of, a lot of medical terminology. Um, and she's, she is a great combination of being extremely knowledgeable in her field, but she also is so great at breaking it down and to just you know, things that aren't so scary. And she's just, they're all very, very wonderful writers. And again, I'm so thankful that I have them. And so at the beginning of each month, I usually send each of them three to four um, post topics and they begin writing. Um, They have access to, you know, swaddles and bottles. And so they go in on the back end and they create their blog posts, they do the formatting um, and things of that sort. And then it, you know, saves as you know, a, a submitted post. And then I go in and I do um, all of the search engine optimization. I create the graphics for it. Um, I do all of kind of like the little back end stuff. And then I publish it and then I add it to my tailwind and I, you know, get it running through all of those group, group boards, excuse me. And then I, you know, put it on you know, my Facebook schedule if I plan to share it there. Um, and that's kind of just the the lifeline of a blog post. And how many images are you making per post? Usually, when I first start out, two to three. Okay. And if it do really- they all have text over? Are they all text overlays, yes. or are they just always, always, always okay text overlay? Um, I like to just play around with the different titles, um, change some words, you know, because. The science of what makes a pin go viral and what makes a pin just die off into the abyss is something that so many people have tried to like specifically pinpoint and it's not a perfect formula. I mean, you can't do A, B, C and within 24 hours have 20,000 repins. Right. Right. There's a lot of great um, guidance that we've received, a lot of just general rules that people say. But again, you know, one of these like general rules that people say is to avoid having like faces in your pins. Yeah. I've got some faces and some pins that have done really, really well, you know? So I think that it's, it's a, it's a combination of a lot of things. And so I really like to try to tweak those things with each graphic that I make, um, just to kind of cover a few different bases. So what would those bases be? Like what, when you kind of go, okay, I'm going to make three images for this blog post. What will you go to as things you think might be successful? I'm, I'm just really changing the title and um, I don't want to say call to action, but um, for example, let's say I wrote a blog post on um, losing weight. You know, I might do the first one on, you know, the complete guide to losing weight. I may do another one that's like, losing weight 101, 25 ways to get past, you know, your plateau. Or then I might do another one of, um, you know, stuck in, number stuck on the scale, can't get past a certain point, here's how we can help you. So it's the exact same title, it's the exact same subject, I'm sorry, but you're right. wording it in different ways because you never know what's going to appeal to someone. Everyone's different. So right. I'm really just kind of rewording those things. I might do maybe some different fonts, um, things might 
look different just based on whatever the image is. If the image allows for me to do text over the whole image, then I'll do that. If it allows me to do text, maybe just kind of like in a bar across the bottom, I might do that. So I really do try to make them pretty different. Um, but the overall goal is I want that text overlay to really be compelling and really, really show them that there's value behind right clicking through. Purpose. Yes. Got it. Okay. Will you, when you, I meant to ask this, when you have your contributors write, do you say this needs to be at least 300 words? Do you have a limit? Um, I usually will write that whenever I'm sending them um, the prompts. Okay. Some of them, sometimes yes, some of them no. You know, the wonderful nurse that I have that writes for me, I'll kind of just tell her like, hey, you know, she just did an awesome blog post for me on um, the the biggest myths of labor and delivery, like debunked by a nurse, mm -hmm. which was so awesome because I mean, moms, you know, we gossip, we tell our horror stories and everyone's like terrified, but then to hear it straight from her. So with her, I usually just kind of let her roll with it. And they've all been writing for me, like I said, for so long to the point where I think they just know what's the ideal length for swaddles and bottles. And um, we don't have anything that's, you know, an extensive three, four page, blog post. Um, I'd say 2,000 to 2,500 words is probably the absolute most that we have. Everything ranges probably in between, um, I'd say 650 to 1,000 words. And the reason is because it's a resource. You know, We are trying to get you the information. We don't really want to fluff it a lot. We want to, to inform you, get you what you need so that you can feel better about whatever it is that you're looking for, or you're struggling with. Got it. And then will you add, say, the three images into the blog post? Or will you kind of add them into, say, Yoast, and then if somebody is going to pin your post, those other images will show up? Yes. So usually I just do one in the blog post. Then what I will do is create new pins in Pinterest and put you know that link there um, you bring up a good point one of a great tool that I really really like and it's I don't want to you know get into too much of the debate because they have been having some technical difficulties with social warfare mm -hmm. um, it's been they've done some updates and some people are jumping ship I haven't had any issues whatsoever and I really really like it um, but social warfare allows me to select which pin if somebody decides to click on that pin it button it lets me decide which pin is going to be used. And mm -hmm. what's more than that is it allows me to write that description like we talked about, that right. description that's got all that, those keywords. I don't have to worry that they're gonna pin something with a blank description. Whatever they're pinning, it's keyword heavy. It's got all of those things that I know are gonna help it grow. Got it, got it, that's, that's terrific. Okay, now how are you doing with Google search versus Pinterest in terms of driving traffic? Google or search engine traffic. Yes, is, for search engines. It's number two for me. I have seen a big jump. I think, let me think, what was it? January of this year, I did a blog post that showed um, just kind of where I was, I think if I'm correct. But I mean, I've seen a great increase. I used to get maybe about four or 450 um, page views a day from search traffic, I'm now into about the two to three thousands. Wow. Um, and again, that has come from all of the amazing bloggers out there who have been kind enough to share, you know, their tactics and their strategies. I took an amazing um, paid course, uh, hashtag Jeff, are you familiar? I love him, yes, love him. He's so love good. Him. And I love how he's so real with you. He's like, look, videos, like they're not my thing. I'm not a really like, out there personal bubbly blogger but man he is so good at what he does and he breaks it down so well um it, and i love like the checklist that he gives you and everything like that so taking his course was probably what really launched that forward for me right um right. I, I i did a workshop with him at a car at an ad thrive conference and i loved him i did thought you go it was to the so ad thrive conference last year in austin yeah, were you there? No, me and my husband were so close to going. And I don't remember what happened, but we weren't able to go. And I have 
like everyone in the ad thrive, ad thrive group has been talking about when's the next conference when's the next conference yes. and i'm like yes, oh i will please go tell me i'm so ready to go this yes year. <laughs> yes so he was there and that's where he just opened my eyes i'm gonna try and get him on the show he opened my eyes to the power of seo yeah, he's wonderful. He really, really and is. So, and I love how he keeps it coming for you. Like, he's constantly sending emails of new things. When this whole Google big whatever happened in August, he was, I mean, the first person in my inbox saying, here's what you need to do to try to fix it. So Is this like GDPR? No, Google oh. did a big update. And oh, okay. And really changed some things. A lot of people in certain um, areas saw some big drops. I didn't see anything too big. Um, I had one day where I got down to just like 1400. Um, but it, it, it was one of those things where I think it was really scary, a little dip and things have kind of corrected themselves since then. Yep. But he's just so knowledgeable. Yep. Yep. Okay. So how do you monetize? My monetization strategy for swaddles and bottles, I think is really about and I think this should be the case for all blogs, diversification. You don't want to put your eggs in one basket. You don't want to have just one way that you're making money. Um, so we just talked about, you know, Ad Thrive. I, I monetize my website through ads, first of all. Um, secondly, I do affiliate marketing. And I think affiliate marketing needs to be diversified too. So many people just think Amazon. And right. Amazon is, is wonderful. I absolutely love it. I was an Amazon mom well before I became a blogger who was promoting it. I mean, I m order more stuff off of Amazon than I would be willing to admit. So I love it. And I love promoting it to, to my readers and the products that I use. Um, but then I also love just kind of the little small, um, the smaller affiliate marketing setups. You know, there's, you know, ShareASale and CJ Affiliates and Pepper Jam, they all have affiliate programs. You know, Target's got an affiliate program. I mean, really, it's it's kind of difficult this day and age to find someone that doesn't have one. So I really think you need to diversify that and not just stick with Amazon, but reach out to all of those, those other smaller affiliates as well. So what are you making your most affiliate income with products like baby pro like check out this stroller check out this bottle or is it courses about new mother like what so what is both. what yeah, what works I, for I your do audience do, um you know the products that i'm using there are so many products for just having a baby in general it can be difficult yep. to really navigate through them and so I do do a lot of suggestions on, you know, either the best products, the most cost effective products, the ones that, you know, work the best, things like that. I just did a blog post too on the products you do not need because you're going to think that you do, but you actually don't need them. Um, so I, I do do a lot of that. I also do, I'm an affiliate for courses that, and like you said, um, you're a new mom, here are some things that could help you out. Or, you know, you're a breastfeeding mother, here are some things that can help you out. So I think it's really just, um, diversifying that and and tr thinking outside of the Amazon box it's a mm -hmm. great way to get started it really yep. is yep um, but then once you've got a good steady hold on it start looking for more things because there are more things out there I mean the courses and, and things like that they add so much value for my readers and I know that they're really really helping them um, so I, I love promoting any other um, blogs that have courses like that so that's another way that I monetize affiliate marketing. And then I do do um, occasional sponsored posts. I'm not too big on them. Um, well, not to say that I'm not too big on them. I don't do them very often because I really do try to stay super selective in which ones I do because I want them to be just really, really in line with my audience and what they need and what products I think would actually benefit them. Um, so I, I do do them. Um, it's just not, I'm not constantly, you know, aiming to do a certain amount per month or anything. Um, when I find a product that I think will be great, I love pitching them. And I, um, of course, you know, I have a lot of messages that come to my inbox as well about partnerships, but we just try to stay selective in what we do so that we, we stay, um, in line with our, what our audience needs. Got it. And what, if you were to break it down, are there any other monetization strategies? No, not for swaddles and bottles. No. Okay. If you were to break it down, how much percentage wise, how much would you say you're making via ads, via affiliates? Affiliates um, is always number one. Um, I definitely make the most with affiliate marketing. And I mean, to, to go back to the diversification, I was just looking, uh, I believe it was Monday at 
you know, my different income for the month. And, you know, Amazon's great. It's on track. It's doing well. But for the first time, those small little, you know, here and there, um, other affiliate opportunities is what I call them, has out, has, you know, surpassed my Amazon income, which goes to show you can't disregard the little things. Like, yes, this little affiliate program may only make you $100 a month, and this program may make you 100 but then when you've got 10 of those small ones, it adds up. So um, affiliate marketing with Amazon and, and other affiliates combined, those are definitely my number one source of income each month. Um, ads is a close second, and I think the ad network that you're with is – a big part of that. Um, and then, of course, sponsored posts would probably be the smallest percentage. Right, right. And then tell me, you then, because you've had all this success, you created another blog and you also have a Facebook group? Yes. So then I created the basics of blogging. And um, obviously, I mean, I'm, I hope someone can tell through everything we've talked about today. I really love helping other bloggers. Um, I am a firm believer that I could give away every ounce of blogging secret that I have, and it's not going to hurt my success. You know, I love I that. I love it. So Wait, say it again. Simple. Wait, say that again. <laughs> say that again. That's that's like, oh, I love it. Go ahead. The the saying that my I, I had a wonderful mentor at um, my past job, and his saying was, "A candle loses nothing by lighting another candle." Oh, uh, yes. And so. I think that as bloggers, it's uh, natural for us to want to like hold everything close and like not give away our secrets. Um, but I think that as long as we all promise to just stay um, unique and always, you know, be ourselves and create our own content, there's nothing wrong with sharing what's working for you. And so I started the basics of blogging as a way to share just really anything and everything that um, was working for me. I created two eBooks, Pinning for Page Views and Mastering Affiliate Marketing, where I just kind of share everything. Um, and then I have a Facebook group where um, I try to get on there and you know share just little tidbits here and there. Um, we recently also started doing um, something where we invite other successful bloggers to kind of like take over the Facebook page for a Ooh, week. Oh, can I come in? Yes, absolutely. You okay. come in and you um, just kind of share like. Can we talk about Milo Tree? I actually talked journey? about Milo Tree this morning. On you did? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, oh, I told great. them I was like, I'm doing an interview this morning. I'm really excited about it. You know, she's the owner of Milo Tree, and I kind of told them, like, you know, why I think it works so well and how it's helped me, you know, bring back traffic and grow a big following. So you've already gotten your shout out on there. <laughs> I love it. Wait, but tell us, what is this Facebook group? It's called Just the Basics of Blogging. Okay, got it. And um, it's very different than your typical, I would say, like, blogging Facebook group because... You know, in some of the other ones, you'll see a lot of like promo days and, you know, follow for follow and comment threads and stuff like that. It's not really my goal. Um, my goal is, like I've told everyone, is just a constant waterfall of knowledge and support. And it's just really where I want people to come and grow and learn and hopefully meet their goals that they have. So it's not a place to come and, you know, share your latest blog post on the wall and stuff like that. It's a place to come and just kind of join this community of people who have the same goals as you. We're all trying to be successful bloggers. And um, I, I really want it to be just like a resource for people, but I also don't want to be the only person sharing what I know. I really want it to mm -hmm. be a community and kind of set the standard for whatever's working for you, share it, share the wealth, yeah. share the love, yeah. share the knowledge. So, um, I'm excited. You know, it's, it's all of this, the new, the blogging thing, blogging about blogging is kind of a newer endeavor. It's kind of meta, isn't it? Yeah, it's, meta. It's, it's, it's new. Um, and it's, it's very different than blogging about babies and bumps and birth and things like that. Um, but I enjoy it. I do. I really enjoy helping people and, um, I love hearing their feedback. And one of the bloggers who's doing, you know, takeover soon, she was one of the first people to purchase my ebook. She was a brand new blogger. She's now, you know, bringing in well over a hundred thousand page views a month. And I know that it's not just because of the blog. I know that she she also just has a, a wonderful mindset in terms of continuously learning and she's yes. just yeah, she's sharp and she's she's just got something about her 
of it, she's she's been able to be very successful at this very quickly. And so I'm going to let her take over and share some of her stuff. Oh, um, I, I, yes, I would yeah. love to come in just to share oh, kind okay. of what's worked for us. And, Absolutely. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's a smaller community. We just, I've just kind of picked up on this with, um, now that my girls are in school and I have have a little bit more time, but I've got, I've got big goals for it. And I I really hope that it becomes something, you know, five years down the road when someone else is doing an interview like this, they can say, well, the basics of blogging really helped me. Mm. Oh, I love that. Okay. Do you have any parting advice for a mom blogger out there? Like you have two little babies and you're doing this. Like, what is your advice to somebody who listens to this and wants to be where you are? I would say, um, oh, I would say to just really embrace the process. Um, it takes time and there's something really, I mean, just the process and the journey of creating something and putting in, you know, these hours and staying up late after your baby goes to bed and, you know, hustling during those nap times. It's a, it's a tough journey, but man, when you get to the point where you're seeing, you know, your goals, you're knocking them off and you're crossing them out because you've done it. It's so rewarding. So just embrace it and be patient with yourself. Don't, don't try to shortcut it or, or anything like that. Really just, just embrace the process and be patient with yourself. Continue to just make those small efforts every single day. They will add up and you will start to see it, you know, happening for you. Oh, wow. Caroline, thank you. Just, you know, I love your mindset. Thank you. Of it's small goals. It's a slow build. Um, the overnight success is, is not really real. But if you just keep in there and learn and grow and do, you're right, one thing every day, you will grow your business. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody and, out there needs a good book and to just, read, the, the Slight Edge is what I'm reading right now. Oh, what's it called? The Slight Edge. Okay. And it's all about that same thing, just constantly making those daily efforts that, you know, if you look back and you look at what you did yesterday, did those little efforts, is that what, that's not what's going to make you successful, but it's continuing to do those over and over and over and over again that's going to get you to the point where you're meeting your goals. And one last thing, which is we all compare ourselves to others and there are always people who are bigger than us, whose businesses look so much better than our businesses. And and by the way, one thing I will say is you have no idea what's really going on in that person or that business's life. Um, And two, when you feel yourself contracting and feeling less than, to force yourself into saying, and I believe in abundance, and I believe in abundance. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Comparison. What's the saying? Comparison is the thief of all joy. If we would all just focus on ourselves and any time that we're feeling down, just write down a few things that we've done and we've accomplished and be able to say that you're proud of yourself. That is a bigger motivation to me than looking at someone else and trying to, you know, catch up with them, so to speak. Absolutely. Well, Caroline, this was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. I have I've enjoyed speaking with you so, so much. I hope I get to meet you in person at the next Ad Thrive convention. <laughs> oh, I would love it. And we live kind of near each other. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. But no, we, we have made some family trips to Austin with our girls here and there. So I will absolutely reach out to you if we make our way there. I realize I ended my recording without asking Caroline how people could reach out to her. I'm going to give you that information now. Her website is called Swaddles and Bottles. Dot com and it's an N in the middle, not A N D. And her email address is Caroline at Swaddles and Bottles. Her other site is the basics of blogging.com, and that's also the name of her Facebook group. So do reach out, especially if you like this interview. And just like how Caroline is using Milo Tree to grow her Pinterest followers because Pinterest traffic is so valuable you might want to do it also. So head over to Milo Tree and get your Pinterest pop-up that tells your visitors to follow you on Pinterest installed on your site. And if you do that, you get your first 30 days free. 